Hey guys, so I've got a new project happening this week. So I've changed things up a little bit. So I've decided, and Marvin, you'll be sitting there going, oh, I've been expecting this. Um, I've changed my mind and I've decided to go for the exposed woodwork or the, uh, in my case, um, wood grain look instead of the white paint. So this is, this is the new uh, woodwork. So the, the stuff I did right, like if you go back right to the, my earliest videos, you'll see the uh, skirtings that I did then, they were quite red and it just wasn't gonna work with the floors and it's like, uh, I got dark brown floor, which I liked. I, re I really liked the dark floor. And um, it's like, no, nah, it just looks too red. It doesn't look right. So I was like, that's it. I'm going to paint it. But I do like the, uh, the exposed, exposed wood look, I guess we'll call it. But, you know, these are MDF. These are MDF skirtings, so there's no wood there. So I've got to do my wood graining. So I'm not sure if you can pick it up, uh, but... I've wood grain this. I'll give you a close up of it shortly. Um, so now that I'm going for that, the mind starts going again. Uh, I don't know about these dark floors. So we're going full circle back to the floors. And uh, because of Marvin's um, concept drawing that you've done, and I'll give you another shout out, Marvin. Awesome work, love the picture. Uh, and for, for you guys that uh, aren't in the know, like me and Marvin are, <laughs> um, I've been talking with Marvin the last couple of days and, uh, and he's made some changes to the concept. Um, and, you know, it's, it's it inspired me to really go full Victorian on this house. And, uh, you know, Julie... Is like, I'm coming home each day going, oh, I'm going to do this now. And she's like, oh, God, you know, how, how, how about, <laughs> you know, what happened to this? And, what happened? and I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, change my mind. And, you know, luckily, Julie trusts me and, uh, you know, she can see my vision and she's not, you know, going, oh, I don't know about that. She's, you know, she can see that it's going to look good. And uh, that was, I don't, did you guys see that? <laughs> um, so, um, so anyway, I'm, I'm going to do the park tree flooring. So I'll show you how this skirting, after I've done this bit here, I'll show you how the skirting's going to look. So, because I'm interested to see as well. Um, so what I did today was, at work I've got so many offcuts of timber uh, and I've said to the boss, look, we can't keep every offcut just in case we're going to use it. So luckily, to do this flooring, I only need little bits, like all these little bits. So I've got on the saw and I've cut these all up to a uniform size. Now, uh, I, I showed these off to Marvin today we're having a, a video call and I said oi check this out and I showed him and you were pretty excited Marvin weren't you um, not as excited as me though and um, so these are um, 35 mil so inch and a quarter by eight millimeters so somewhere between a quarter and three eight somewhere in the middle there um, thickness so there's enough thickness that we can come along and we can give the set floors a really nice sand and get them flat and that can be done several times over the years if we want to resurface and we won't be worried about going through. So and they're 400 long, so 400 long in foot and inches is three, three foot four inches I'll say, somewhere there because 300 is a foot, 12 inches, no hang on sorry uh, 16 inches, that, 16 inches, that's right, that's what it is. So uh, that's how big they are. 
So I've worked it all out, and what I'm going to do here, this is, this is the really exciting bit, and you guys have, um, some of you guys have sort of mentioned this in the comments. I'm coming down here, I've got an edging with a pattern that's going to go down the edge, and then in here, we're going to go with some heritage tiles with a, either a like a checkerboard type pattern or a, um, uh, what, are they, what are those tiles called, uh, Caleb? Uh, uh, can't think of the saying. What was that, Jim? Mosaic. Mosaic, yeah, yeah, like a mosaic sort of tile in here. So when we come in with our wet feet and whatever, we're on the tiles. Not that it matters, this will all be sealed in polyurethane. But anyway, the tiles are going to go here, so that's going to look pretty awesome. So, yeah, I've got all these bits, uh, a ton of different shaped bits, and I'm going for... So, this is Tasmanian oak. Um, now, I, you guys would go, oh, Tasmanian oak, awesome. Whoops. Well, it's nothing like American oak or English oak or any type of oak. Our oak down here in Australia is actually a gum trees, which are pretty much like a weed. Um, but this is gum tree. Now, there's three different species that make up the uh, Tasmanian oak. And they go from like a little bit pinky in colour to um, like a browny yellow, to a golden colour, to a pale uh, blonde colour. Um, so there'll be a good amount of colour in here. And then, as well as that, I'm going with this timber. So that's the oak. And then this one here is Tasmanian blackwood. So it's not black, as Marvin pointed out. Um, it's it's an orangey golden browny colour. Um, so basically it's just a contrast to the oak.
All right, so first up, I'm going to give this a little bit of a sand. While I'm working on these doors, sanding, painting, everything that I'm doing, I'm keeping along the grain. So any scratch, any brush mark, or anything will add to the look of the grain. If I start sanding across ways and start taking out all those ridges that I put in with the undercoat, it's just going to make it look flatter. So everything that will be brushed like that, this will be brushed along the grain. Everything will be going with the grain so that I add to the grain look more and more with every step. So that's just a little trick. It might be obvious, but some people might, you know, might come along and brush this way and, you know, I, I generally will go along here and then I'll come along and I'll keep that keep that going like that so the whole time so yeah that's what I'm going to do I'll go and get the um, what was the color it was mission brown I uh, shouldn't be able to forget that one so just brush off the dust off of this now I'm not sure about these architraves yet um, I am still looking to go with a symmetrical pattern. I'll just go and get the uh, architrave I'm thinking of to show you. All right, so the more I look at this, the more I like it. Um, so it's going to be a symmetrical and it's going to have a top block. I forget what we're calling it um, or what it's called. Uh, it'll have that at the top. Um, and no rosette. Uh, I could put the rosette in. Uh, I could. I might still have the rosette, uh, but I've only bought a little bit of this, um, and I don't mind if I end up not using it. Uh, I just want to get this look right. So, yeah, that's. Um, it's a bit different. It's not. It's not something that would have been ever made, uh, and it's not something that you can buy. I've got to make this. I have shown you in a previous video, but this is made up out of one, two, three, four, five pieces. So um, I've got a fair bit of this to make, but it's dead easy to make. So I think it'll look good. It's chunky, and it's. It looks. It looks old. It looks like it could have been a style back in the day. So we'll see what happens. I might, I might change another 10 times before I actually get the one I uh, end up making. But So anyway, I'm, I'm stalling. I'll go and get this uh, Mission Brown. All right, so a few things to show you. If you haven't seen it, my homemade wood graining brush. This is made from like a witch's broom. Uh, I've, I've cut the um, straw off, put it between some blocks and put a handle on it so I can blend in the grain. And these are my wood graining tools. So there's, I've got different patterns. So um, yeah, there's tighter grain, looser grain, um, like a small tight grain and a, a wavy um, a wavy tight grain so I'm going to use all of these in doing this 
one type of wood. I don't know what the type of wood is that I'm making. Um, we'll call it the mic. <laughs> I don't know. We'll call it something. But uh, it's not going to look like anything in particular, but it's just going to look like real wood. So they are the wood graining tools, those, and my brush. Um, so, all right. Um, so here's my Mission Brown. Well, when you see this, you're going to go, oh, it's like chocolate. It, it, honestly, it's like chocolate. Um, so we'll paint that on. Now, I get all the edges first. Now it's important that bit that you go over to get the brush marks going the right way in it. Otherwise you'll end up with a blob that won't look right. Alright, so I'm going to paint this whole panel with this Mission Brown. All right, that's all right. Now the trick, smaller brush. That's not the trick. The trick is while that brown's still wet, get the the ready stuff and paint some lines. Just whatever. Just any random. Not always straight. Timber has angles on it or waves. Already that's starting to look like a bit of wood. It hasn't even got any grain in it. It's only got some solid colour on it. This is awesome. It's good fun. It really is. It's, you don't have to be. You don't have to be particularly artistic. You just got to th th picture a piece of wood, and the grain, the crown grain. I, I, I work with wood all the time, and the black wood has got a lot of different colours in it. So. Maybe I've got a better idea than a lot of people would. But I know that the colours can go straight and they can taper and the grain, the crown grain can look like almost it's painted over the top. So, um, you know, it's... Um, 
be random with it. That's the trick. Be random. Don't don't try and paint. If you paint lines, you, it's not going to look any good. That that one like is dark. The red is bright, and then it tapers out. Here it's a straight wide line. Here it's a line, and then it goes over there, and and another thin one over there. Just random. Total randomness. That's what's going to give you the best look. So I need to leave that. The, the first layer, it probably a trick, another trick is that first brown layer that which I'll call the ground coat that you put down, put it on nice and wet. So then you've got a bit more working time to blend the, uh, the other ready colour into it. So that's going to take maybe half hour, 45 minutes to dry. So, and then I can't do the wood graining until that's dry. So I'll, I'll just leave that for the moment. I'll go down and I'll do a bit of, uh, bit of work on the parquetry flooring and um, I'll come back and we'll do the uh, actual wood graining bit.
Okay, guys, so the um, ground coat has dried now. Um, what I did was I went and got the, the original wood grain that I did that I thought came out too red. I went and got that paint and I just painted some other lines in to highlight the lighter patches because timber's got a lot of different colours. If you get one block of wood, it's got so many different colours all in that little piece. So um, that's all um, sort of dried and blended into each other a bit, which is fine because that's sort of natural. So uh, now we'll do the magic. So what I've got now is that is water-based paint. That's why it dried so quickly. Uh, not that you would know, uh, but it dried fairly quickly because it's water-based, which is great when you're doing you know, a, a whole heap of it. It's great that it can dry quick. This stuff here, uh, Cabothane Clear uh, in oil-based. You can get this in a water-based, but the water-based dries quicker and I need a slow drying um, top coat so that it doesn't dry before I do the graining. A little piece like this, it's not going to, but if I was doing this whole door and I was doing that patch, that patch, that patch, it, it could dry too quickly. So this oil-based stuff is great. It won't be dry until tomorrow. So I'll leave it overnight. You know, we'll look at it as we go past and see if we like it. Um, uh, this is in a matte finish. So... Uh, I'm not sure if I want gloss or not. What I might do is I might go and get some gloss uh, for a, a final coat and have a look and see how it looks. Um, the gloss is going to bring out the grain more, which might be good, especially on all this upright stuff that it's going to pop and bring out the... It's going to make it look brighter. So that could be good. So uh, the wood grain... So this is uh, the matte uh, Cabothane Clear clear coat lacquer uh, or uh, it's not a lacquer whatever it is um, so oil based clear coat uh, and I've put some stain in it so the stain I've put in I've put in a dark brown that we call the which is what I use for that floor there which we call Mondo chocolate and some walnut stain that's got a lot of red pigment in it so that that just made it like a dark red so the dark red is going to contrast against against these other colours and it's going to look a little bit orangey, ready orangey sort of colour. So yeah, so I'm going to brush that on, nice and thick but not so thick that it's going to run and all blend back together because when you're doing this flat it's much easier because you can put it on nice and thick, wood grain it and you don't want it too thick because it will kind of go back and, and uh, touch again where you've scraped it out. So, um, but yeah, doing it upright, you just got to do it, but be aware that it could run. So you don't want to put it on too thick. So I've got my big brush again. So I'm going to just brush this on. You can see when I put that, because this is glossy, because it's wet, see how much has brought the colours up? So I think the gloss might be the way to go, or at least a semi-gloss.
Now for the magic. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down with this uh, wide one first, and then I'm going to go down, uh, so I'm going to put one wide one offset, then I'll put this narrow one there, there and there, and then I'll blend it all together with the brush. So what you want to do is you want to start where the small point is, and so you put that in there, And I didn't do it where I said I was going to do it, but it doesn't matter. I'll put another one over here then. And then a couple of these. That looks awesome. All right, so I'm going to stick them straight in some terps to clean off because if you leave that in there, that are only going to work once. I don't know if it will break out, um, if it will stiffen up and break out, but because they're silicon, but I'll clean them up each time. So now the last thing you want to do to really make that look good, um, you can see down here. You just need to soften that edge a bit. And that looks like the real deal. I'll give you a close up. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you can only have one go with the wood graining tool. If you try and go over it, it, it you end up with dry patches and um, it, it just doesn't look like grain. So you've got you to give it just a one go. And if you don't like it, you've got to start again and <laughs> redo it. So, but no one's going to be looking at... Oh... That doesn't look like wood. No one's going to be doing that. They're going to be standing back and going, oh, I love all the woodwork. And unless you say, ah, it's not actually wood. It's actually um, painted on. No one's going to know. Everyone who walks in here is going to go, oh, I love the stained wood. It looks really good. So that may be a bit too dark. I may have to go for a lighter colour. Um, I might do this whole door and uh, I might make my architrave up and put it all on here and see how it looks. I'll do the, um, do the transom as well so that we can um, really picture this whole thing done. And the biggest trick with doing this and making it look like wood is do it different every time. So use a different tool. Uh, like these wide, pa there's not many of these wide panels. You're virtually going to have one swipe across there and then blend it, the rest of it. So, uh, you know, uh, you, you probably want to always do the pat, the wood grain pattern somewhere in the middle, but offset it a little bit. Maybe do two small ones. Um, do one panel all dark. Do one panel all light. Mix it up. That's the trick. Mix it up and no one will know because timber is totally random. You know, each tree is different. So, um, 
that's that's really all there is to it. So I'll let that dry. I'll come back tomorrow. Or I, uh, I've got to fill that. I'll fill that spot. And if it's dry, I'll do these two panels tonight. And uh, if not, actually, I, I'll do this. I'll do this small panel, uh, even if that's not dry. Uh, so then I can come back and do the outside frame tomorrow, and uh, we can then see the whole door as a, a see see if it can full trick your mind. It tricks my mind, you know. I stand back and I look at it, and if I think wood, my brain will think wood. You know, my brain will go, yeah, that's wood. But if I think, or oh, I painted it on, it will never look right, probably. So anyway, I'll fill that little hole, and I'll come back later and do these two small panels, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, see it start to come together. Hey guys, just about to edit the video, and uh, I was on my way home, and check out what happened to the freshly painted U. Had an accident.
So I couldn't resist myself. I had to give you one of these down the hallway shots because now I've got the lead light panels in there. Uh, sorry, I should say the stained glass panels. And uh, the arches uh, looking a bit more finished. Uh, I'm gonna come through here and do flushing and get all these corners done. Um, I have um, given the ones that I did in the tutorial a, a last coat and they're ready to sand now. So I'll get back onto that and catch all these other ones up. And I've got a little bit of um, plasterboard still to put up, so I'll get and do that. And um, yeah, we'll, uh, I reckon that we'll be able to see this hallway getting painted in um, maybe, uh, maybe the other side of Christmas, but not too far away. So, so thanks very much to everyone who's had a look at this video. Once again, I really appreciate it and I love getting these videos up and watching the views roll in. So thanks to everyone that views it and thank you to everyone that uh, drops a comment for me. Um, I'm still catching up from last week, but I'll get caught up and then I'll probably get behind again. So um, yeah, that'll be the end of this video. Uh, I will keep working on this uh, uh, over the next few weeks at least. Uh, pro probably until Christmas I would say you're going to be seeing this hallway uh, progress along and get painted and yeah get all finished so I uh, hope you join me for those videos that will be coming up uh, weekly as I progress along with that so until next week thanks again for watching and uh, you take care and I'll see you in the next video cheers